unmerciful, unrestrained. Severe weather is a menace you can't control, but you can prepare. Nine first warning weather ahead of the storm. Tornadoes, thunderstorms, floods, all can threaten your family's safety and likely will. So planning ahead simply makes sense. Good evening. I'm Chief Meteorologist Steve Raleigh. And you know, less than two weeks ago, we got a vivid reminder of how true that is when two tornadoes touched down in Ripley County, Indiana. One of the twisters knocked a modular home off its foundation in Osgood. The other damaged a barn in the same area. Luckily, no one was hurt. You know, when severe weather strikes, knowing what to do could save your family's lives. And we want to help you prepare tonight. Tweet your questions about severe weather right now to at Cincy Weatherman, and we'll try to get to them and answer them for you as we head through the half hour. You know, sometimes a look back can help you prepare for the future. The deadly tornado outbreak of March 2nd, 2012 was just the last in our string of outbreaks that have hit at least once a decade. In 1999, the Blue Ash F4 tornado killed four people. The 1986 Northern Kentucky tornado caused millions in damage. The 1974 Xenia outbreak and a tornado outbreak in 65 and 1968 proved this point. When the tornado hit Blue Ash in 1999, life-saving warnings took several minutes to hand type and get out to the public. We've exponentially jumped ahead today. On average, we see about 1,200 tornadoes annually. And unfortunately, about 55 people die every year. So the technology advances are so important to improve that lead time. But with the tech advances, it's also important to keep that human element. As long as a forecaster looks over these supercomputer models, we'll continue to put out better and faster forecasts. You know, a lot of people think that the accuracies are going to increase, and they will. But the statistics that we look at is the models can still miss the temperature by 25 degrees. Very rarely, but they can. Or the amount of snow by a large amount. We're going to need forecasters in the process to catch that in real time. Model and technology advances specifically improve our ability to see more nuances in the atmosphere, like what we now call spin-up tornadoes. These are typically short-lived tornadoes that we didn't see back in the day. Now Doppler radars see so much more. So as technology changes, forecasting gets better, naturally. Right now, we use dual polarization radar. It just doesn't shoot a horizontal beam. It actually shoots a cross-section of whatever we want to look at. Now, the next evolution, phased array radar. Imagine that radar dome with a bunch of radars all pointed at one object. If I have a supercell heading towards Cincinnati and nothing else in my area, I'll be able to aim that radar and all those radars and get tremendous detailed information. So I'm going to be able to see any type of circulation in those thunderstorms a lot faster and be able to even put out better lead times. Unfortunately, it's only a matter of time before another deadly tornado outbreak strikes the tri-state. At least it's good to know the forecast curve is promising. But overall, I, the uh, probability of detection of the tornadoes and the amount of lead time that we can give you have slowly been going up in the last 20 years. 